Upstate New York. July 11, 1932. After eight months of dogged investigation, New York City detectives catch up with underworld triggerman and cop killer, Edward Fats McCarthy, and give him one between the eyes. McCarthy, whose real name was Edward Popke, first carried a gun for Dutch Schultz and then Vincent Call, after the latter broke away from the Bronx Beer Baron in a bloody revolt in the spring of 1931. By October of that year, the entire gang was in custody except McCarthy. Detectives had been searching for McCarthy since the previous autumn, when he shot his way out of a Manhattan brownstone. On the evening of October 19, 1931 patrolman John Broderick was walking his beat when he recognized underworld character Enrico Battaglia, wanted for a murder dating back to 1928. The officer trailed Battaglia to a brownstone apartment building on 78th Street and then called the precinct. Detectives Ed Willie, James DeFerraro and Guido Pisano were sent to bring him in. After entering the building, the landlady began to yell at the lawman, tipping off Battaglia, and anyone with him, that cops were on the premises. Ignoring the landlady the detectives made their way to the third floor apartment and knocked. There was no answer. Pisano and Willie shouldered the door open. They were met with a hail of bullets. Battaglia wasn't alone. With him were Fats McCarthy and another hoodlum named James Moore. Both detectives fell with multiple wounds. The Ferraro opened fire but dropped after taking some bullets as well. McCarthy, Moore and Fats' wife Jean ran past the detectives. Taking steps three at a time, Officer Broderick made it up the stairs just as Battaglia was jumping over the detectives to get away. Broderick opened fire. Battaglia dropped dead as his confederates fled up the stairs and made their escape via the roof. Though wounded five times, Detective Pisano carried Detective Willie downstairs and into a cab. At the hospital, he insisted that Willie be treated before him. These brave acts probably cost him his life. Detective Pisano passed away two days later. Through items left behind by his wife Jean, police learned that Fats McCarthy was the main culprit they were looking for. McCarthy was no stranger to the NYPD. He was arrested back in 1924 for his part in a drugstore robbery that resulted in the murder of a doctor. Before he was killed, the doctor managed to shoot Fats in the chest. McCarthy was arrested at the hospital but managed to beat the rap. By the end of the decade the gunman was an intimate of Dutch Schultz. It was the Fats apartment that Schultz first went to after being wounded in a nightclub fight with gangster Chink Sherman. Police raided the apartment and found McCarthy's wife Jean along with a bundle of the Dutchman's bloody clothes. And some weapons. Fats was arrested a few months later in an apartment along with Vincent Call's brother Peter, just weeks before the Schultz call war erupted. Following the death of Detective Pisano, Detectives Thomas Riggs and Harold Moore were tasked with bringing McCarthy in dead or alive. From the outset, they assumed it would be the former. Both detectives were chosen because they knew McCarthy on sight and both had been involved in gunfights. After nearly nine months of investigation, Riggs and Moore traced McCarthy to a summer bungalow in the upstate New York town of Colony, just outside of Albany. With the aid of two state troopers, Walter Riley and Winston Chesterfield, the detectives closed in on the house. Chesterfield covered the rear of the house as the other three literally crawled up towards the bungalow on their bellies. As they got closer, Moore saw McCarthy sitting in his car. Their hopes of taking him by surprise were dashed when a couple of young boys, who happened to be wandering by, saw Moore and one of them shouted, look at the man crawling in the grass. There are various versions of what happened next. One account has it that Fats wasn't even in the car, but in the house and when he heard the boy, he came running out the front door with a shotgun in one hand and a 45 in the other, blazing away at Moore. Another states that, knowing his cover was blown, Moore ran up to the car, busted the rear window and shot Fats to death. According to Moore, upon hearing the boy, Fats jumped from the auto with a 45 and opened fire. Moore raced up and exchanged shots with him, the car between them. 
McCarthy ducked behind the rear of the auto and Moore charged him, firing all the while and hit him several times including a shot between the eyes. Once Moore and Fats started blasting away at each other, Mike Basile, a former Vincent Call gangster, and George Kelly, a small-time Albany hoodlum, appeared in upper windows and opened fire on Moore with automatic shotguns. Moore was hit by a few shots but still managed to take out McCarthy before falling out of the battle. When Basile and Kelly opened fire on Moore, Riggs and Riley blasted away at the gangsters from below. McCarthy's wife Jean surrendered after taking a bullet in the hip. Kelly tried to escape out the back but Chesterfield brought him down with a bullet to the leg. His confederates taken care of, Basile surrendered. Moore was taken to the hospital where he recovered. Fats went to the morgue and was then shipped to New York City for burial. Basile and Kelly each received a sentence of 17 and a half to 35 years for attempted murder. With the incarceration of Basile and the death of McCarthy, the curtain was brought down on the Vincent Call mob, one of the Prohibition era's most desperate gangs. Philadelphia November 5, 1928 Gangster handsome Eddie Rafferty, member of the Reagan gang, pulled into his brother's gas station and was conversing with his sibling. As they chatted, car pulled up and suddenly the air was cracking with shotgun and pistol fire. Eddie's brother hit the deck. Eddie slouched over the steering wheel wounded. Just as the noise was subsiding, a second car pulled up and another barrage was fired. More shots thudded into Eddie and his lifeless body slumped to the car floor. This was followed by a third car that raped the place with yet another round of gunfire. It was said that handsome Eddie was bumped off in retaliation for the murder of another gangster named Robert Haggerty. Newark, New Jersey November 3, 1930 Gangster John the Ape Pacelli receives visitors in the hospital, and they don't bring flowers. Pacelli, said to be a lieutenant of Newark mob boss Richard the Boot Boyardo, checked himself into the Newark General Hospital with slight scalp wounds. He told physicians that he slipped getting out of his car. In actuality, they were bullet creases. The ape was on the spot and had survived an attempt on his life. His wounds were treated and he was given the okay to leave, but Pacelli, not eager to venture back out into the streets, asked for an out-of-the-way room to convalesce for a few days. He was given room 33 on the second floor. At 3 p.m. he had two visitors who stayed a short time. At 6.05 two men entered the hospital and bypassed the information desk and made their way to the second floor. They asked someone for directions to room 33. Moments later the hallways were echoing with gunfire. The two men walked out at a leisurely pace. Hospital staff ran into room 33 and found the ape dead, with two bullets in the head. You can read about more New York City gangsters who were bumped off during the Prohibition era in these ebooks. Links are below.